on this channel right here, I've played a bunch of horror games and said a lot of things about them. All right, let's remove the fuse. What are we gonna do? <laughs> I even have a channel where I make detailed video essays about horror games no matter how long they take. But surprisingly, there's something that I've never done with regards to horror content, and that is rank them. So that's exactly what I'm doing today. A couple of weeks ago, I decided to create a tier list on the site everyone uses when they run out of content. And in this video, I'll be going through almost every single random indie horror game I've played on this channel and some of the popular ones I played back in the day, making a tier list ranking a grand total of 99 indie horror games. This video took ages to edit and is a different T9 video to the usual. So I would appreciate it right now if you showed your undying support for starving artists by pressing the like button 6789 likes and you know what i'll let the top comment decide what i do don't make me regret it if you disagree with my placements leave a comment down below i guarantee you i will not read them anyways enough from pre-recording me just enjoy the video Good afternoon, morning, evening, or night. How's everyone doing on this fine Saturday night? I wasn't gonna miss a Saturday for the end of the world. Are you guys doing good? You guys doing great? Synonyms for good, antonyms for bad, antonyms for good, synonyms for bad. If you're having a bad day, then you're having a better day than I am. But I hope I can make your day better. Uh, I'll just I'll just say hi to you guys in my uh my invisible room. Hello. Hi. So, uh, what we're doing is located throughout the entirety of the very next screen. And what I'm doing today is something extremely different to what I normally do on T9. In fact, I've never, ever done it before on the T9 channel. I've played a bunch of indie horror games on the channel. But what I haven't done is I haven't ranked them yet. Oh, no, don't scare me now. Ah! So today, we're going to do the old reliable... <gasps> Tier lists. We are going to be ranking 99 indie horror games. There are 99 indie horror games. And before I even begin, I'm actually going to give you guys the official link so that you guys in the chat can also participate at the same time. 99 indie horror games and Garden of Banban ain't one. I'm not adding it. No. No, and if I did it would it would probably be very far down so to know but anyway as you can see there are 99 random indie horror games of varying degrees of quality most of them I've played on t9 and there is a playthrough for almost every single one of them available either on Thathvod or on t9 some games I haven't played for t9 but I've played on my own we're just gonna go through each and every one of them and uh reach a consensus as to what uh, indie games are good and what indie games are bad. And we're gonna be harsh. We're gonna be really harsh. We're gonna upset people. We're gonna, we're gonna upset people a lot. It's going to be very, very upsetting. I don't think it uh, needs any more introduction. So I guess without further, uh, So let's go and begin and do this tier list. All right, the very first game on our list is A Dark Place. If you don't know what A Dark Place is, it was a game that I didn't stream, but I recorded for T9, and it's one of those games that messes with your PC. It straight up is a virus, but as a game. I'll show you some gameplay of uh, A Dark Place. The video of it is so old, it's the old hack model. Apparently, I had I got the, the safe version because if you wanted the actual version it does things like shut down your pc mid playthrough so the developer made a youtube friendly version i remember playing this game i think i enjoyed it it had some really fun uh mechanics i remember my pc getting the desktop thing all right uh oh and my my uh Oh, my screen is now melting. Yeah, it did It did stuff like that. I believe there is also a, a point in the game where it changes your desktop background. There also is a, uh, a point in this where... Um, oh they literally call it dancing in your task manager. There. You. Yeah, so, so basically, um, it, was, it was entertaining. The only problem is the world design and the map design of the game 
was pretty bad. And I think the developer knows it because the developer themselves ended up commenting on the video right here. Uh, hey, thanks for playing my game. I apologize for the poor level and plot design. This game's pretty old and I wasn't really experienced in this field at the time. I know the importance of it now and have plans for updating a dark place and my place for better plot direction someday. For those wondering, a dark place 2 has been in active development for around three years now. I've been quite busy taking care of other stuff lately. Regardless, I hope to get this out by next year or so. And apparently, there actually was a 2023 update of a dark place which is out now because i do remember the ending of this game being really really disappointing but for the game mechanics it was pretty good so i think i'm probably going to put a dark place at uh we're going to we're going to be putting it on b it's a low b a high c for me amanda the adventurer this is the full release instead of the demos. Amanda's a very interesting case for me because uh, Amanda, I, I, I really enjoyed it. Now, I won't say that the game is scary. I feel like it was an escape room, but with creepy elements. I enjoyed the game for what it was because it didn't try to be bigger than what it is it didn't try to go for ultra convoluted lore and everything everything in the game is spelled out for you within the game and i thought that the production value for a game of that caliber was pretty good like the irl segments in on the tv were well done the game itself had decent voice acting both woolly and amanda had really good voice acting of an indie game of that caliber i'm surprised that the the actual va was really really good i know that was a sequel hook but i think apart from that there's not really much to write home about with regards to amanda the adventurer i really enjoyed it it kind of sucked that a lot of people threw it in the same bin as stuff like garten and stuff like that because i feel like this game was well worth its price there was about five hours of playable content on that game the game didn't set out to be like streamer bait jump scary the only thing i'd say is the ending although the ending is pretty smart to be fair like the ending was just Oh yeah, if something scary shows up on the TV, fucking break the TV. That's like the most reasonable thing to do when it comes to something like that. I don't know though. That that's what that's what I thought. So I'm going to put this at a, a low A high B, but I might put I might drag it down to a B if we change a couple of the um of the ranks around. Amnesia the dark dis Okay, that goes without saying. That one is S. Although I will say we can't understate the damage that it did to the indie horror scene because the, the, the one thing about amnesia is that amnesia taught developers that maybe being defenseless is good in some cases is an all right thing but a lot of it started the walking simulator trend walking simulators in horror games i'm like man we really decided that walking simulators should be the norm because amnesia had had puzzles and chases and stuff like that and if you think about it a lot of the shortcomings of amnesia got fixed in frictionals future games well frictionals future game singular because i believe there's only one game that frictional have made that is better than amnesia the dark descent personally that that's my personal opinion but that's mainly down to the story because frictional were in their bag uh making it and it's later on in the tail list andy's apfel farm oh boy oh boy that one that one's uh that, that one's uh, uh i don't i don't know man andy's apple farm was it was it, it, it was certain the thing about andy's apple farm the idea of the game is pretty good Okay, I lied. I think, I, I don't know. I think I'm rating it based on its potential and less of the actual game itself because um, I did not like the way the story went, personally. I don't know whether that's controversial because uh, I felt like the, the concept of the game with all of the characters in Andy's Apple Farm having like IRL counterparts that like they died. It's like, what if... What if all these children's souls um, were in this game? It's not finished either. It's chapter based. I did not like the story going into the whole demonic possession arc. I, I, I didn't like it. I thought it was just going to be like a weird game. I thought it was going to be like a .exe weird type game. But then the ending decided to go for, oh, maybe the developer is weird. 
And I was like, okay, that, that could be something, okay? Maybe the, maybe the developer is just really delusional over the deaths of um, their children. And I was like, oh yeah, that's that that's gonna be, that, that, that would be cool. But then they decided to go for the whole sacrifice to a demon who turns the, the developer into Andy. And it turns out that Peter the Pumpkin is all a part of this conspiracy that um, all the characters are in the game and stuff like that. I, di I didn't like it. I think the game suffered from anachronism. A lot of the visuals in the game didn't really sell the era that it was supposed to be in because the visuals looked really good for a game in the 1980s. I will say though, I do like the developer's other game, uh, Rabbit Knights. A uh, Rabbit Knights was was a really fun game and actually hid the links to Andy's apple farm until the end of it. I'm not sure about Andy's apple farm though. So I'm probably going to put this one on D. And now Anne is Anne's a, a pretty special game for me. If you don't know what Anne is, Anne is an RPG maker horror game with fully animated cutscenes developed by Rong Rong. I really enjoyed Anne. The only thing I'd say that's against Anne in general is de how derivative it was. The dev even admitted that it's like a mix between all their favorite like RPG maker games. Apparently uh, part of the inspiration was my RPG maker video. Anne was a RPG maker horror game in which Anne got stuck after school after 9 p.m. and uh, uh, chaos ensues. It's a lot of like chase sequences, like really difficult chase sequences as well. What, what else is there? Good music as well and a good animated uh, cutscenes. It was basically a, a mixture of Heavenly Host and Eeb. But obviously it's um it's it's derivative of oh my yeah look how hard the chase sequences are <laughs> Yeah, Anne was pretty good. I think I'm probably gonna put Anne in, um, I'm probably gonna put it in A. Low A, uh, high B. Ow, Oni, another RPG maker horror game. Probably uh, the Blueprints. I think it's one of the one of the first ones because it wasn't Ow Oni released in 2007. <laughs> It was released really, really early. Influential, but doesn't age well. Are you sure it doesn't age well? I think it aged really well. I think of all the RPG maker horror games, it aged the best. Have you seen how big the Out Only franchise is now? It's as big as Corpse Party. There's live action movies, there's anime, there's multiplayer horror games. There's a lot, it's, it's a massive franchise. It's crazy. I want you guys, all right, editor, I want you to Google search Out Only right now and just put the results on the screen right now i'm gonna sh i'm gonna show you our only is a full franchise now our only gives you stuff like this yours <laughs> oh the markiplier thumbnail you got the our only film and apparently it was based on, it was based on our only version 2.0 some content of our only is apparently um lost media it's it's very hard to find it but yeah there was a i just looked at the rating 3.9 out of 10 Oh boy. Wait, there was a sequel to it. Oh man, you know what? That, that could be a fun watch if I can find it. If there's enough demand, maybe I'll go see it. But yeah, Al Oni has like a full on franchise. There was a multiplayer mobile game. In fact, you know what? Let me try and find it. Um, Al Oni Online. <laughs> this looks scuffed. All right, I'll show you. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, just wanted to show you the Out Only franchise is pretty big now. But for the original game, I thought it was decent. It's pretty difficult. I kind of appreciated that the game didn't treat you like a fucking moron. Like it wasn't just put this over here and then put this over there and then put this over here and over there. The, the puzzles were actually puzzles because if you didn't, well, if it wasn't obvious, Hiroshi was a pretty smart lad. I feel like our only was pretty good. The only thing that didn't age well was just what it did to the franchise and um, some of the dialogue. We're gonna put this one on A for now. At Dead of Night. Now, I have not, I'm going to admit it, I have not played At Dead of Night yet. Escape the Ayuoki. I'm putting that on E. I did not like that. Purely based on the fact that it was boring, it was buggy, and it just wasn't scary. The only thing I really liked about it was the mechanic of not speaking. If 
you're a YouTuber that speaks a lot in videos, then um, uh, you're not exactly in a good position, are you? And the model's a bit goofy. But then again, the model was supposed to be goofy. All right. Oh, we are now on B. We're now on B. All these basics in education and learning. Now, I've um, counted Baldi's basics as the entire franchise. And do you know what? I've got something extremely controversial. I think it's S tier. Everyone's going to be like, Baldi? S tier? But hear me out on this one. I, I genuinely think for a game of that caliber, I definitely think it's S tier because it's not a walk. It's not just a walking simulator. They did the simplest um, game mechanic, having maths questions and framing it like an edutainment game and everything turn on its head. It's like a Slender clone, but with extra steps. It's a very difficult game. It actually requires you to have strategy to beat it. And there was no milking of the franchise. It was just the original game that was made on the Game Jam. And then afterwards was a Kickstarter. The Kickstarter was successful, made Baldi's Basics Plus, then Baldi's Basics Classic Remastered. And that was it. It's a complete experience that the developer delivered on without milking it and it was a really good experience it has <laughs> so controversially i think i'm probably gonna put this on s on s tier bendy and the bunker 16 right, bunker 16 was interesting that's an old game like that's around 2000 and 13. That one was a walking simulator, but that one did claustrophobia uh, really, really well. I remember specifically, we replayed the game to see if it was still scary in 2020. Two. From what I remember, Bunker 16, it was the game that had the the, the diary of um of, of George George Walker. Okay, it's basically the um uh it's basically the I think Richard edited this video. <laughs> I can't. Ah, beds. Those you, beds. You're not tired yet. <laughs> this game was pretty good for its time. You have to remember, this was 2013. English was not the developer's first language. I I don't like being mean with uh with spelling, but it's still really funny. Yeah, the shirtless one, shirtless video. Was I shirtless in this video? Was I? I don't remember. Oh my god, I was! I forgot! This is the one when we were snoring! You didn't see- you didn't see anything! You saw nothing! But yeah, I kind of like the mechanic of the bunker getting, um, thinner and thinner the- the more into the bunker that we, uh, went. And also, the main character snored really loudly. Like, really, really, really loudly. So for that, I will say, for its time, I think Bunker 16 was pretty good. But I'm probably gonna put this a B because it is very much a product of its time. Case 2 animatronics of- no, I'm only joking. <laughs> Case 2 Animatronics is probably uh, one of the funniest games ever made. The game was pretty greedy of the developers, but I, w I would just, I would, I would put it in S just for one scene. One, one. Uno. You ready? J just for this. Is this diffuse? Oh, I think it is. Let's just put it right in. Do you surely want to turn the generator on? All right, let's remove the fuse. What are we going to do? <laughs> I, th I think it's the fact that his scream just cuts <laughs> it. Just <a> oh! <laughs> and he turns into it again. All right, let's remove the fuse. What are we going to do? <laughs> just the oh! What's wrong with this toy? Masterclass in game design. <laughs> Everything about the game was amazing. I, I don't know, man. That was, it, was, it, was, it was fun as hell. You know what? It, it deserves its own tier. We're going to do this black. And I'm just going to Omega Lol. That's literally it. Case Animatronics 1. That has to also be there. We had classic lines like, um, What happened to the lights? Is this some kind of deja vu? <laughs> the VA made that game. Absolutely. I will say, though, I don't want to be too mean to the game. The developers were pretty greedy with the case 2 animatronic survival thing where it's like it's chapter based, costs money, wasn't even finished, early access, and the third chapter was just a blatant port. It was a port of their multiplayer map that they tried to make a story around and it was really really bad. Despite the edginess, I 
for one, actually do somewhat like what they did with the animatronics in, in case. The mechanics were terrible. You didn't use the monitor at all, even though they tried to say, oh my God, we, we gotta go. But first, let's find, let me find this innovative iPad. I just saw a body get dragged, but I'm gonna go find this iPad first. And then you end up not using it. It was a mind bogglingly uh, stupid decision, but um, I think those animatronic designs deserved a better game. Cats in the box. That is probably one of the best RPG maker horror games ever made. Gustav did such a good job with Cat in the Box. It's absolutely like insane. Maybe not the gameplay standpoint, but it had one of the best stories. I genuinely think it should be rated up there with some of the best RPG maker horror games. I think the secrets in the game and uh, just the fact that they pushed RPG Maker to pretty much its limits with regards to some of the hidden stuff in the game. All right, here we go. I, I will show you. The artist for Cats in the Box drew um, this. Spoilers for the game if you haven't played it already, but if you know, you know. I, I remember seeing this and I was like, no! Cat in the Box, I think it's one of the best. I genuinely think it's one of the best. I'm probably going to put it on S tier. It's one of the best RPG Maker horror games ever made. Choo Choo Charles. Choo Choo Charlie. I enjoyed the shit out of this game. I think this year was like the year of developers actually, you know, proving themselves. I thought Choo Choo Charles was really, really in enjoyable. I didn't follow the development as much as some people did, but I knew of two star games. So seeing Choo Choo Charles be finished and actually be really enjoyable was sick. I enjoyed that game because it's like the game design choices were so good. I don't know how to explain because it wasn't much of a walking simulator. You had like stealth sequences, you had boss battles, you had chases, you had like, you know, puzzle sequences and finding random MacGuffins. It was, the game literally had it all. Maybe I'm being too nice to it, but I feel like Choo Choo Charles was pretty enjoyable as a as a horror game because it, it didn't rely too much on jump scares. Where well, yeah, I think I'm gonna put I'm gonna put Choo Choo Charles in A, definitely an A A tier game. Cooking companions, cooking companions. I've got quite a a, a lot of words about this game. I really like the art in this game. They went overtime in some of the the designs, but I will say the only caveat I have against cooking companions is some of the writing. I think in terms of the character archetypes, you could see 90% of the game from a mile away. Like if you remember from the stream, I enjoyed the game a lot, but in terms of the dynamics between each of the main characters in cooking companions, didn't we all clock that Karen was going to be sus from the first five minutes? She was hot at least. I actually, while I was making this tier list, I saw the creepy image of Karen, right? And I was like, damn, they, they knew what they were doing. It's one way to market it. To be fair, I think the marketing was mainly down to the, the fruits. But all I'm saying was like, I don't know, man. It's like, oh no, Karen, don't, don't, don't stab me and chop me into pieces and, 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 and cannibalize me. No, don't do it. You're so sexy. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's probably like some of the streamers. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> anyway, uh, Cooking Companions. I enjoyed it. The art was pretty good though, but I, I can't overlook the writing being a bit, <laughs> you know, so I'm probably going to put Cooking Companions on B, but I will, I will judge again once I finished the DLC. Dark to Dark what? Doki Doki Literature Club the original game. Now, I am not counting plus in this. I've had many arguments about uh, DDLC. I will say a lot of the ratings for Doki Doki uh, Literature Club, right? is rated based on how people perceive the game now. But I'm going to say that Doki Doki Literature Club was an entirely different beast when no one knew anything about it. I played the game before it got popular. Like I, I knew about the game on release and everything. So playing the game blind was an experience. The game's scares are pretty good, but the problem is it's really good when it comes to programming, but at the same time, it kind of blows its load very quickly 
once shit hits the fan. One thing that Doki Doki Literature Club suffers from, even when I played it back then, is a pacing issue. It is part of the game itself. You're supposed to get attached to the characters as much as possible before the carpet gets ripped from under you. But at the same time, you spend about, without skipping any of the dialogue and like actually reading the dialogue, you're probably going to be doing the initial parts of the game for about three hours before all of a sudden, whoops, Sayori's dead now. Ah, God, the, uh, the file's on the desktop. Oh God, the screen is changing. Sayori's hanging in the background. There's random eyes everywhere. Oh my God. I also think that this is also a, a byproduct of the fan base. DDLC as a brand kind of moved away from what made it so scary, right? The game itself, was kind of a satire on visual novels in general. It was a commentary on, you know, pi uh, parasocial relationships with characters in a video game like DDLC, which is why Sayori is so attached to the character and you have so many scenes of like, you know, being with Sayori interacting and also the, the girls kind of like fighting for your approval. And I remember Dan saying before, I think while making DDLC, didn't he say something about not liking visual novels and all? The whole point of Doki Doki Literature Club was the notion of not getting too attached to the characters because on a whim, they can get ripped away from you. And that's what Monica did. Monica was well aware of the genre of game that she was in. And the whole point of Just Monica was also the, like, you know, don't get too attached to these characters, get attached to me instead. And then uh, she ends up, you know, you end up having to delete her and delete everyone. There are no survivors unless you do everything in the game beforehand. The thing is though, the whole point of the game was not to romance any of the, of the characters because they could get ripped away from you. You know what people did? <laughs> they got attached to the characters. Granted, it's really good character designs, but you know what I kind of wish that Dan did? I kind of wish that it was left at that. I do kind of feel like um, DDLC Plus was a missed opportunity for more scares and everything. I'm not gonna be rating Plus with regards to this, by the way, but I just wanna talk about Plus for a bit. The side stories were more like playing the whole visual novel thing in completely straight. I really wished there were more scares because you know how effective the scares would have been on DDLC Plus because part of the scare factor of the original Doki Doki Literature Club was the fact that it messed with your PC. It showed files on your desktop. You had to look through your game files. You had to edit some of the, the CHR files, which would give you something random. Oh, it was a good form of meta horror. They had the home screen within the game because obviously DDLC Plus is a console released game as well. They could have pulled a simulacra, which is set entirely on the phone with its own phone UI. I thought the new stuff from DDLC, I thought it was gonna fuck with the, um, with the home screen. Anyway, the original game is really good. It's pretty good for its own thing. I'm going to put it at A. I think that the only thing against it is the pacing and the fact that it, it kind of busts too early with regards to the scares. Dead Realm. Now, I did mention this last time I did a tier list. For those of you guys who are watching on the second channel, you would not know what I'm talking about, but how many of you, show of hands in the chat, without Googling, how many of you know what Dead Realm is? All right, me, I see, nope. I see me, I had the, I had the game. I am so sorry. <laughs> Are you guys ready for some lore? Let me take you all back. You guys are like little baby. The way it worked was like Gmod hide and seek, but instead of Gmod hide and seek, it was random horror characters. In fact, let me quickly get you some uh, game play. This right here was Dead Realm gameplay. It was basically DBD without all the fancy stuff. It was hide and seek. We had shields. You had decoys and stuff like that. But you either played as a monster or you played as the people that were hiding. And uh, what you ended up having to do, I, I think it was turning on generators and stuff like that. And you had to use like uh, CCTV and stuff like that. It was an all right game. 
But Vanos and Syndicate and the Gaming Lemon, they suddenly started making a bunch of gameplay videos just talking about, uh, oh yeah, Dead Realm is a, a brand new game that I've never even heard of before that all my friends all, all of a sudden started playing and it's out now on Steam and it costs money. Uh, they didn't disclose that they financed the game. They got in a bunch of trouble for it. Remember, this is also before the CSGO Lotto controversy. They got in a lot of trouble with the FTC. They got forced into like saying that they funded the game. Also, do you know the first sign of trouble when you look at a game on Wikipedia is if Wikipedia talks about your game in past tense. I will now show you the Wikipedia page. Dead Realm was a horror style game for the PC. The main gameplay consists of one player taking control of a ghost while the remaining players are humans who must avoid being haunted by the ghost. On August 27th, 2020, Three Black Dots ended support and closed the official service according to an announcement made on August 19th, 2020 due to overwhelmingly negative reviews. Now, okay, now this one's a doozy. I am 99% sure that a Vanos gaming fan went and wrote this Wikipedia article. You, you'll see what I mean when I read this um, paragraph. By 2018, the reviews became extremely negative, including one that said, Dead Realm is quite literally a dead realm. Ah! The developers are charging 11 pounds for an abandoned, broken, buggy mess that they have no intention of fixing. Other reviews said things such as, the game is just that, dead, and that it was impossible to play a game unless one was able to invite friends because no one plays the game anymore. These scathing reviews, compounded with other issues such as lag, <laughs> eventually led to the servers being shut down in 2020. However, the game did not officially close down until August of the same years. Despite this, it ended with mixed reviews on Steam. That paragraph just straight up looks like someone wrote it as like a school essay. There's also some bonus lore about Dead Realm. What if I told you that Dead Realm has a sequel? So what they've done is that they've abandoned Dead Realm and they ended up making, hold, Hold it. They ended up making a VR game. The only problem is, is that no one played it. It's got positive reviews. But you know, I'm gonna scroll down to the reviews. Let me check the reviews. The game's controls are abysmal. The fact that you made a VR game and are saying the VR controllers don't work on your VR game is so abs... Wait, what? They made a VR game without the VR controllers working on the VR game? The game is 30 minutes long from start. 30 minutes? How much does it cost? 15 quid! That's like $20! I have two hours of playtime on my account because I sat there and ate lasagna for 20 minutes and fumbled around with garbage VR controls for another 30. Then because the guidance in the game is so bad, I died repeatedly until I somehow managed to figure out there's a hidden mechanic that you guys refuse to make clear like how if you went the wrong way, you died. Why not just prevent someone from going where they're not supposed to instead of repeatedly killing them without reason? Well, wow. Okay, <laughs> that's e that's extra lore, I guess. Dead Realm goes into our Omega Lull tier. Devour. Devour. Devour is also a co-op horror game. I believe it's PVE. Now, Devour is only on the list, truthfully, because of uh, one reason and one reason only. You know how ironic it is I'm reacting to someone who's a serial reactor now? Remember when he played games? Remember when XQC played games? Anyway, uh, this right here. Oh, loud jump scare warning. <laughs> See, it's one of those games that had really obnoxious jump scares, but it's it's the very definition of fun with friends. Was that the monster or him screaming like a girl? You know, that's a good headcanon. That does sound like it, it's well-timed for X screaming. Hang on, let me just... <laughs> I don't know whether I can really rate it highly because Devour is one of those games where it's more fun with friends and the jump scares are pretty obnoxious, but like, um, it's competently made. I'm gonna put Devour at six. Dark Season. Dark Season. Dark Season was really fun. I really, I, okay, personally, I really enjoyed Dark Season. What I will say, is that I'm going to be biased now and I'm going to be controversial. The only reason why I'm not giving Duck Season an S ranking is because it's not optimized for the Valve Index. <laughs> it absolutely sucks to play using a Valve Index. You can even watch my video where I played it and I had to switch the game to easy mode because the controls 
for duck season they were optimized for the the, the vive it came out before the valve index was released and they haven't updated it since but duck season is a genuinely a really fun game it's one of the best vr games i'm gonna put it on a rank emily wants to play two and emily wants to play fun fact about emily wants to play two did you know the thumbnail for emily wants to play two on my channel is on rule 34 <laughs> did you did you know this was posted on R34. To this day, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get. Why? What? What do you mean, understandable? Okay, I can see. What do you mean? It's so tame. Shia, don't agree. Tame, but the thighs. Okay, fine. If it's if it's the thighs, it's the thighs. But come on, man. But anyway, Emily wants to play too. I did not like Emily wants to play too. I felt like the game turned into a rage game after a fair bit, and it was kind of just a walking simulator where it got a bit frustrating. I think it was a bit too long for its own good. I don't know why Shia's still here, but have you played Emily wants to play too? In terms of its lore, it didn't have much. It was literally just gimmicks with the dolls. And that was it. And then they started stacking them towards the end of the night to the point where you're just playing the game and you're just waiting for the game to end while getting jump scared. I'm fine with a difficult game, but it got a bit overblown towards the end. I think I'm probably going to put uh, Emily wants to play two in C and Emily wants to play one in D. Thap, I'm sorry if this is annoying or petty or anything, but can you please skip over Shipwreck 64 in this list? That's my game and the Steam version isn't done yet. And I appreciate you waiting until I'm done since I'm not proud of my old stuff anymore. Oh yeah, sure. I was gonna. I was literally gonna put it on. I don't know because I haven't played it yet. Employee of the month. We just played that game, and you know what? I'm putting that in A. I don't think that game needs any more description than that. I enjoyed it. In fact, it was a really decent game. I liked it. I liked the um the constant loops. The humor in the game was great. It was like a job simulator, but it was a job simulator with an eldritch horror like twist which i really like did the second part release on the second channel yet uh that's in production eerie i okay listen eerie i'm putting eerie high on the list because of one thing and one thing you already know i don't know what i'm doing I love how the jump scare has no sound. Also, yes, this is the one with the crying cat sounds. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I, lo I love that they're realizing they don't even see the full monster. All they see is just the. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's, it's the fact that all they see is the lips. Ah, shit, 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 shit. Oh, shit. Fucked up, screaming. Stop. Alright. <laughs> okay, um, also, fun fact about this. Do you know this jump scare right here? This this sequence right here. Wait, hold on. I don't know fuck it up. This, this right here, this is a scripted, this is a scripted jump scare. The monster actually isn't there. Uh, the monster's always behind them. You guys have watched me play horror games. Uh, you guys have played horror games before, I'm sure. You know that really cliched scare where it's a corridor and the monster always goes running from one side to the other? That's literally a scripted jump scare. The monster's not actually there. It despawns after it leaves this view. But the fuck they saw and they went just Oh shit! What the fuck? I don't fucking know. Fuck. So this is scripted. <laughs> I love how he walks away and then <laughs> I did play Eerie on T9 myself and I also want to show you guys there's also one thing about this game that I need to show you that you guys need to see. The reason why this game is just the greatest game of all time. Can we can we leave? Oh god. Is the whole place gonna go up? Is there gonna be like a cutscene at the end? Let's leave! <laughs> oh god, we're gonna get like a bad ending cutscene, aren't we? Alright, I guess we're just gonna have to go then. <laughs> <laughs> oh that was the that <laughs> You escaped into Lake. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it's <laughs>
That's it. And then it just goes back. It just goes back to the menu. It just. <laughs> But yeah, so um, the thing about Eerie though, I think this game needs a remake. The game had some really cool mechanics like the spray paint so that you know where you've been. That's such a genius mechanic to just have in the game because you can easily get lost. I will say the monster design is really good. The monster scraping sounds, those are like genuinely really, really creepy. It's just that it very much is a product of its time. And it also, it's very close to being lost media. If you didn't know already, this game was released on Desura. How many of you in chat know what Desura is? Desura was a competitor to Steam. I say was because Desura kind of died. It went bankrupt, if I recall correctly. Theory wasn't released on Steam. It wasn't put on its own website for a download. It was posted only and exclusively on Desura. Eerie was very close to being Lost Media. John Wolf could only play Eerie because he still had the file on his PC from when he played it almost 10 years prior. I got lucky because I found a download from the internet archives. Try not to download that one because I can't guarantee that one won't give you viruses. With that being said, I'm going to probably put Eerie on C. Evil. Now, okay, now I've put Evil twice because did you know, ironically, that there are two evil, there are two games named evil that are both shit. Now, this evil is the classic one that a bunch of YouTubers played back in the day. It was really bad. I guess the aesthetic was, a, was okay, but it had no substance. It had stuff like the media room that had random creepy pasta stuff. It was so bad that even Markiplier, and this is old, Markiplier, like babyface glasses Markiplier. He played the game and even he back then thought it was shit. If you try and rewatch some old Markiplier, the games that he played back then, we were starving for good horror content. It's that bad. Wait, I'm gonna put this in F. Now, evil, this Russian horror game. I still, you know what? I still kind of feel guilty. Apparently I bullied the game off of Steam. I did leave a review. It was a negative review. It actually isn't possible to beat the game without knowing the code from another YouTuber. So my review was just the, the answer to one of the codes. I went back to check on the review. After I dropped my video a couple of days slash weeks later and the game was gone. Disappeared from Steam entirely. It was gone. Now, if you guys don't know what evil is, allow me to enlighten you. Ah, ah, let's see. I'm going. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I still can't believe they, they only programmed the jump scare to show up in front of your vision. Also, yes, that is the Mixamo. That is the Mixamo model. We knew that we were in for um something when the game started like this. Oh, we're waking up. All right, what's this? Oh, oh! <laughs> 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 oh man, yeah, no, it was um this game the game was also really really loud. Pretty sure that's an actual person, like real life person. Oh <laughs> <laughs> fucking crap! <laughs> <That was laughs> I had to put the volume down for you guys. The jump scare was literally nothing. <laughs> like it was literally nothing! Like real life person. <laughs> Like what? <laughs> like why? Why? Why did they just? Why did they just stick a microphone down the toilet and then flush it? But yeah, that's evil. Just for the titty jump scare, I'm gonna put it in Omega. Evil. E evil goes in Omega lol. Eyes. E Y E S. Yes. There's something about eyes I need to tell you about. Eyes is a very interesting case because the game used to have a really sexy ghost that was chasing you. You ready for some old Markiplier Riz? <laughs> ah, run! Holy balls! Oh. Oh, hello, baby. <laughs> what was that? Looks like a ballet dance. <laughs> he was so panicked, and then he sees the jump scare. Ah, run! Holy balls! Oh. <laughs> Oh, hello, baby. <laughs> what was that? It's like a ballet dance. <laughs> hello, baby. Uh, that, that, was, that was the original eyes ghost. Now, uh, I am going to now uh, show you guys the reaction <laughs> to uh, the same jump scare, but elsewhere with the buildup with everyone's favorite comedian. Alright, 
Yeah, exactly. And remember that to everyone yeah, watching. Exactly. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. <laughs> 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 it's like the <laughs> So yeah, um head. Yippee. But yeah, so they changed the mon so they changed the um the monster from uh big titty ballet dancer to um head. Otherwise it's quite literally pog champing. <laughs> Just the ah! <laughs> Like what the fuck is hell? Shit! <laughs> so with eyes, the gameplay in which it, uh, it eyes and tails is that you play as a, a rubber that um, is just thieving. Apparently, the PC game got abandoned and the mobile game is like really polished. And I'm like, why? But with that, it's a pretty simple game. I did like the mechanic of being able to see what the monster sees, which gives you time for you to be like, oh, I should probably like move away. Apart from that though, it's pretty repetitive. I'd say it's probably about D, D tier. F Head off my beloved. First to fathom, I have um, I I have uh qualms about first to fathom. We're talking about in general first to fathom because it's chapter based. We're talking about all three of them. I don't know about first to fathom. I liked the realism induced scares. The environment and the aesthetic was good. The scares are really good because they were rooted in some form of realism, right? But apart from that, I hmm. I don't know. This one's gonna be. I'm. I'm just gonna blindly do this one. I think I'm probably gonna put this one on B. All right, the one that a lot of you guys have been waiting for. Five Nights at Freddy's. I have put most of the games on this list. We shall begin with the first one. The first one is S. You have to think about it for its time. That kind of mechanic had never been seen before. Most of the horror games, especially the independent horror games that we got at the time, were just walking simulators or flashlight simulators or stuff made in the fps creator engine but that basically made you defenseless but made you like defendless with a capital d all you could do was prevent the inevitable the animatronics were heading to your office one way or another the story was ambiguous enough for you to actually be really scared you have to think about it at the time because everyone knows nowadays all the mechanics of fnaf and the bollocks that scott did with the story and all that kind of just stupid shit and everything people thought that the animatronics teleported around the place you know how scary it was playing for the first time and seeing just the animatronics and each of the cameras just like stare standing there staring at you on the camera that was it was, it was pretty creepy and also the rare Bonnie screens, the animatronics twitching when they get near to you, Golden Freddy randomly appearing in your office. The first game is really, really good. The only qualm against the game is the fact that it turns to a rage game once you keep on dying. But it was really something else. The phone guy dying at night four, and then night five just being the Jadoon speaking through the phone. It's like everything in the first game was quite literally the perfect storm for what is, in my opinion, one of the scariest games ever made at the time. Now, we're old and crusty and raisins and stuff like that. So nowadays, FNAF is just like, ah, oh, FNAF. Most people just comment about which animatronic they want to, which which modern animatronic they want to have sex with, which is like most of the Twitter discourse, either that or just the, gla the glam rocks and all that kind of stuff. It's basically that. But back then, it was scary as hell. Well, with the exception of like, I know furries latched onto um, Foxy at the time. Editor, don't bother, no, don't, no, don't. Five Nights at Freddy's 2. Five Nights at Freddy's 2. I'm... Hmm, what are we going to say about Five Nights? I think I'm going to put FNAF 2 in A. I think it was a good sequel. Everyone says, I feel like too much stuff is going on in FNAF 2. But that's not the case. The only time that really applies is night seven. Is the custom night. Scott balance the game the first night and stuff is is the toys the second one is the toys the third one's when they bring in the withered and the toys don't show up and then the it's and then the fourth one is the withered then the fifth one is the toys again it's like i genuinely think it's pretty balanced it's just that it got really egregious on night six and seven five nights of freddy's 2 was more of a micromanaging simulator than fnaf 1 is personally now the music box is a it is a bitch in that game i did not that mm, the marionette the pop mm, just uh, uh. fun fact when i was recording background footage for um 
FNAF 2. I needed to get some like footage of just the office, right? But I forgot that regardless of what night it is, even if everything's on zero, the puppet stays active. It runs out really quickly on night seven. And it's really annoying. Like really, really annoying. The animatronics designs, the wizards were scary. The toys absolutely were not scary. I'm gonna say the toys, the toys were, the toys were not scary. What them. They were not. Toy Bonnie was not scary. Toy Chica was not scary. And I'm gonna say, I'm also gonna say it. Scott knew, Scott knew what he was doing with Toy Chica. Also, speaking of Toy Chica. Next time you look at a girl's butt, just know there's poop inside. <laughs> oh god i got bored and i i made it um in the afternoon with jed helping with the lip syncing and i animated and did the visuals for the rest and now it's my most successful uh tiktok and i've seen people use it um on reaction images i heard the person who made that toy chica model doesn't want it to be used lamel I, I i don't see the tweet anymore it's literally the kevin hart image i don't know don't don't shoot the messenger i thought the meme was funny five nights of freddy's three no i feel like thanos with regard to fnaf 3 maybe i was being too harsh i i i fucking hated fnaf 3 i thought it was boring as shit the only thing that was going for it was the story i thought it was a good conclusion but it was boring as shit as a location phasma's fright looked cool all right fnaf 4 I... Now, I've played this game the most. I'm gonna put this one on B, actually, because I feel like that, that game mechanic of relying on audio is not a good game mechanic. If you have a game mechanic where you have to crank your volume up to 100% just to hear minimal breathing in your ear only to get your ears blown out by uh, the loudest jump scare known to man, which half of the time is a gamble to get working. I didn't know. The only thing I liked about FNAF 4 was Fredbear and also the story between the knights. I was like, oh yeah, that's okay. But technically it's an unfinished game because we never knew what's in that box. I will say Fun With Plush Trap is an extremely easy game. Like Fun With Plush Trap is really easy. It's just the other ones are just uh, like, uh, I don't know. Is Help Wanted there? No. Pizzeria Simulator. Hmm, now it's a good conclusion to the story, but I was like, the office segments, are infuriatingly bad but the tycoon stuff i really like the tycoon stuff but are we rating it in the entire thing or are we rating it just on i the tycoon gameplay is really good i i mm, i don't know now the speech at the end makes up for it because that was a good conclusion oh god you know what it's actually starting to piss me off it tied up all the loose ends and yet there's fucking more how what how? There should not be more. Like quite literally, how? Oh, yeah, never mind. Sick. Sister location. Oh, okay, sister, sister location is going to be a controversial one. I did not like sister location. I, I thought it was too bloated. I've kind of said my take on sister location in my main channel video. Actually playing it is really, really, uh, it's a chore. And some of the mechanics are like, oh wow like the the, the circus baby mini game the spring locks i kind of like i kind of liked the changes in mechanics in each night but you know how bloated it was you had so many gameplay styles that weren't even elaborated on the fun time freddy one you had the 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 parts and service you had the spring lock mechanic you had the fun time foxy in the auditorium you had then you had traditional fnaf gameplay with ennard or well, no way you put security breach below bendy see but f means it's actually genuinely bad omega lol means that it's funny bad Frenbo, Frenbo, Frenbow, Frenbow, Frenbo. Friend, W. I'm going to put this on the IDK, but I'd say I would put this an S or A. In fact, you know what? Just, just for the thing, I, I'm just going to do this for clarity's sake. I'm putting this as an S, but I have not, I've not played it for T9. <sighs> oh. You like the image for Hello Neighbor? <laughs> oh man, I still cannot believe. I cannot believe 
Apparently, the guy who did this got fired. And you know, to that, I say, good. Why would you beg it that hard? That is just, unironically, what were they thinking? Because what they think was going to happen? Matt Pat just turns around and goes, wow, I, I've been asked so many times by the developers of, of um, Hello Neighbor to go and make a video about Hello Neighbor. It's just, it's, uh, no. Happy's Humble Burger Farm. Now, I actually really enjoyed this one. Happy Humble Burger from... I really liked how fleshed out the, the world was. Because you'd think of a game of that caliber, that would be something really simple that you can just slap out in about 30 minutes. But no, I st on 49, I it took me about five hours. I still haven't... Well, not five hours. It took me about like three to four hours and I still haven't beaten it on T9, but I beat it in my own time and it was really, really enjoyable. The stuff that you can do, I think there's just something about... Um, retail horror games that hit different because i i i'm not worked retail but i know how stressful it is how many of you guys in chat work retail right now i used to be at c i am so sorry an actual sex worker in chat i am so sorry i'm job hunting and my local cx seems to be the only place that doesn't hate disabled people is it over for me all i'm going to say it depends on where the cx is because if it's a cx in london Run. Okay, for those of you guys who don't know what CEX is, this is what one of the stores look like. It's an entertainment exchange. Phones, games, electronics, computing, stuff like that. Amiibos, VR stuff, microphones, graphics tablets, basically any electronics. And fun fact about sex, right? I went there and um, they had a copy of Silent Hill on the PlayStation 1. I bought it. Want to know how much that cost me? 70 quid. Seven, 70 quid. <laughs> they also had a physical copy of Parappa the Rapper. Let me see Let me see some guests. Let me see some guests in the chat. 70, 50, 90, 50, 50, 185 pounds. It's sent me back 85 great British pounds. Now I saw on display, there was a physical copy of Conker's Bad Fur Day. 70, 100, 110, 105, 100, 200, 100, it was 330 pounds. Not, not even the package. I'm gonna tell you, it's not, not even the package, just the cartridge. Anyway, we completely sidetracked. Um, happy Sumble Burger Farm. I'm gonna put this one, um, A. I, I think Scythe Dev Team did a good job with this one. Eve. Dang. I think it goes without saying. I'm on observation duty. I'm talking about all five. And I think I really I really enjoy it. It feels repetitive though. I'm gonna be a bit quick with some of these. I'm gonna put this one in C. I'm scared. I would put it on S just for how like you know influential that game is for meta horror indie horror games, right? But towards the end of the game. The constant restarting is ridiculous. And also, the fact that you have to restart the game and get all achievements is like... Ugh. I will say, the damage that my, my T9 thumbnail did is... Um, <laughs> I found it really funny that my T9 video, the original I'm Scared video, got demonetized because of the thumbnail. I'm gonna give you some quick lore about it. This is the T9 thumbnail. And everyone was like, oh my god! Uh, YouTube deleted the thumbnail and um forced me to change it which was really interesting to me because this is a this is a thumbnail for the fun it's fully monitored <laughs> oh it gets better guys i revisited the game recently on my second channel i did this one a thumbnail it's fully monetized. Make that make sense. It, it's not the blood. I did this for I'm Scared Revisited. And this got fully monetized. Make it make sense. Ivan, if you're, if you're ever watching this, um, sorry, but not sorry. Why did you make her AKA Coom Lady so dummy thick? Like, why, why did you do that? Why did you do that, man? <laughs> I'm going to put I'm Scared in A, though. Input six. Input six is interesting because I liked that mechanic that they did. How you had 15... 15 minutes to beat the game. It, it was a really cool, innovative the innovative idea, and the aesthetic was good, and it was made in the Godot engine or the Godot engine, and I, I, I thought it was made on Unity, and I was really, really surprised. No, this is good. I'm gonna put this on B. All right, next one. Inside. Inside, like, come on. <laughs> Inside the back rooms. I was kind of, this one kind of, I mean, 
Ironically enough, it's the latest T9 video. If you guys didn't know already, I've uploaded onto T9. It's less scary when it's multiplayer. But yeah, inside the backrooms was a bit... Mm, I, 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 I don't know. I, I didn't... It wasn't enjoyable. I didn't really feel anything playing it. I'm just gonna play it. I in love... I, I think Iron Lung is S. I think Iron Lung is S tier. I will say though, I'm interested to see how Markiplier um, is gonna pull off the, like the movie. I've been debating with this with a lot of people. I've been debating that Markiplier, that all caps Markiplier emotes is probably one of the most cursed emotes I have. <laughs> Why did Richard make that emote? Oh man. Anyway, um, I'm interested to see how Mark is going to make Iron Lung. If I recall correctly, Markiplier is writing, directing, editing, producing, and starring. And wants this to be theatrically released. I don't know, dude. I watched the teaser trailer. I want it to be good. But at the same time, I've seen YouTubers make a very good theatrical horror movie. I strongly recommend you guys watch Talk To Me. Talk To Me is a really well-made movie, a full team behind it, and it was made directed by Rekka Rekka. Unless I can be proved wrong. The teaser trailer for iron lung didn't really sell me on the aesthetic of the iron lung itself it looks like a youtube original thing i looked at the trailer and if it wasn't iron lung i would think that it was just going to be called like in the deep with markiplier i i i don't i don't know what has me hopeful is that dave is working on it and andrew hoshult is also working on it something about that camera style yeah i mentioned i mentioned it before Something about the camera style being off. I don't know though. We'd have to see more content because I hope it's good. It's good seeing YouTubers make it, but also we have to get real. <laughs> it steals. Man, man, needs needs no more introduction. It steals as a uh, Jeff the. <laughs> Layers of fear. Um. I don't like Layers of fear. Limbo. Little nightmares. One. I'm being quick with some of them because there's not much I can say in detail. Uh, Little Nightmares 2. Both of them don't. Actually, no, I didn't like. A was kind of. Mm, 2 was a bit buggy compared to 1. Mm, yeah, no, I think, I think that's the right thing. Lost in Vivo. I really like this one. I'm going to put this up there. Sorry, it's, it's, it's a good game. Love Sam. I'm going to be quick with this one as well. Um, I'm going to put this one. Let, let's, let's be quick with some of them so I can be more articulate with like the bigger ones on the, on the list. It's probably going to offend some developers just being like, what, the, what, what do you mean bigger one? All right. Okay. The Great Debate. Mad Father or Miso? I liked Miso just because of the other characters. And also Misao, the, the, the protagonist for Misao is very, very, uh, very, very funny. She doesn't care. I think Misao probably has the most ways to die in any RPG maker game. Literally everything in Misao can kill you. I remember I was in disbelief. How did a phone kill him? I think with Mad Father, I just, I just, I just really like the aesthetic of Mad Father. Just the wolf RPG editor, you know, this developer is really good at it. Cause the ending is so creepy with like, with like him just going, oh yeah. I'm gonna put Mad Father on A. I have to get real. I gotta put Misa on. Oh, I I didn't like. I, I you know what I didn't like about it. I'm gonna put down for Misa. I didn't like the redemption of the teacher. That teacher was a pedophile. They tried to like humanize the teacher by saying I got bullied when I was younger, so that gives me excuses to sexually assault a a student and then kill him. That was. Mm. Like, I, I can be real, the game could be good for that, but I just didn't like that. Did not, that did not sit right with me. That was, ugh. The original version of Misa had her body parts chopped and everything. It's like, what the fuck? They had the nerve to, with a straight face, have an extra thing at the ending to try and redeem the teacher with like a sad backstory and then a reincarnation arc. That was weird. Misa was 100% justified. Madison. Was Madison the one with the femboy um, protagonist? Don't don't even think about it, by the way. Don't. The ending was just. I don't know. The ending was like, ah, you have to you have to kill yourself. But I will give a kudos for being competently made. I'm putting this one on tier. Monstro. Monstrum. Did I tell you about the law about how I went to um I went to a convention, and in the convention they had a big banner for uh monstrum 2 a massive booth for it i was with pricey and i went to the monstrum 2 booth because i literally said oh my god monstrum 2 the sequel to monstrum monstrum was really good single player horror game so i remember talking to the staff member there they asked me what i liked about monstrum 
and I was honest. I said Monstrum was a really nice experience for a single player horror game. There's not many horror games that are set in the environment that Monstrum is set in that does it really well. And I was like, Monstrum was pretty good. The monster was scary and uh, it, was, it was a nice experience. It was a nice single player experience. Now, um, they asked me about Monstrum 2. I said that I would very much like the same single player experience. The developer nervously laughed and um, said, I think Monstrum is a, it will be a good experience for you. You should go try Monstrum uh, on, on the PCs that are at the booth. So I'd go to the booth and I start playing it. And it's a dead by daylight clone and I break it within 30 seconds. I had to be really nice and say I enjoyed it. They gave me a free key for Monstrum 2. They also gave a key to um, Pricey. And um, when I got home, I messaged John Wolf about it, about Monstrum 2. I just wanted to know in general, just what Monstrum 2, like, did you play it? And um, John gives me some lore. John tells me that Monstrum 2 is a byproduct of the developers being greedy apparently they had the blueprint and the character designs and the monster designs for a good single player experience but they wanted to chase the bag that dead by daylight had so to chase the bag of dead by daylight they made they converted the game into a multiplayer game and no one liked it everyone hated it and apparently they started banning people from the discord server for being against that the turn to a multiplayer horror game and now the game's dead apparently john wolf and a bunch of other youtubers played monstrum 2 really really early on and they gave feedback to the developer saying make it single player but they didn't listen they literally just told all the youtubers to go get ben you can look at the steam reviews now the steam reviews are pretty scathing but the first game holds a special place in my heart i don't think there's anything bad i could really say about the game personally so i'm going to put it at s until further notice mr hobbs play house when i tell you the bag the fumbling of the bag i like moonpit i was a pledge for so long they gave me a free key for Mr. Hobbs Playhouse 2 and Mr. Hobbs Playhouse 3. Mr. Hobbs, and the thing is, Mr. Hobbs Playhouse 1 was so good. Like, the first game was terrifying. It was the perfect clock tower aesthetic. You were only armed with your hearing, and that was it. You had to have headphones in to play the game properly, or else you were definitely going to die. But the fact that you didn't see Mr. Hop much in the game and you had to you had to avoid them as much as possible the aesthetic of that game it was dark and i loved it the first game is really good but it did have some caveats in that it was pretty much just a a, a walking simulator and everything but the chase sequences were good and the it was pretty damn scary it was unexplainable as well it was um just a giant plush bunny demon thing that's it then the second game decided to add law they literally did the corpse party thing where instead of um having the agency on sachiko they were like oh no it was witches it was a bunch of murders and all that kind of stuff it was bloated but the voice acting was decent it just wasn't as good as the first game the third game though oh my god and you know what pisses me off the cover art it's so good. They got Snartles to do the cover art. The cover art goes unequivocally hard as nails. But then they took the mobile game pill. Because I remember between Mr. Hop's Playhouse 2 and Mr. Hop's Playhouse 3, they had that mobile game, Mr. Hop's Manor Escape. And I remember playing it and I was like, this doesn't feel like a Mr. Hop game. Like they had random with the skeletons, the boss battles, the ending, the, the main ending of that game being the worst thing you're ever going to see. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills seeing all these people praise Mr. Hop's Playhouse 3 for being like, oh, what a satisfying conclusion to the arc. What are you guys playing at? You guys taking the piss? They literally did a quartz party blood drive. Mr. Tomatoes and Ms. Lemons. This one is a bit, this one's going to be a bit weird. Now, Ms. Lemons is bullshit hard. The amount of things that the game has to work against you is unbelievable. But it's a top 
tier game down to the connection factor. That shit was cool. I'm a sucker for meta horror stuff. The way the games interact with each other, taking items from one game to the other, if one one of the characters dies in one, in the other game, the other character gets affected by it. Ms. Lemons, like, being so powerful that she, if you get kicked out of um, Ms. Lemons, you can't play Mr. Tomatoes because Ms. Lemons kicks you out of Mr. Tomatoes as well. The pure connection factor between both of those games was really, really smart. And I, I, wish more games did that but as a game it's not really all that so for that I'll, i'm gonna put miss lemons and mr tomatoes in b i'm actually gonna put mr tomatoes in c but for the reason that mr tomatoes is is a is a parody of that game the that was the game of the pumpkin that i go like nope i don't want that it was it's, and it's, it's 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 not really as polished as miss lemons my friendly neighborhood there are some caveats about it but i enjoyed my friendly neighborhood it's basically the puppet re4 re7 because it's first person i wouldn't say it's s tier though what i didn't like about my friendly neighborhood was the last part of the game that last part was exhausting and also they could have done so much with that section of the game where it turns into my unfriendly neighborhood but it's literally just it's two minutes of walking and then a boss battle that wasn't really a, a boss. It didn't feel like a boss. It just felt like... I don't think I even I, I was in any danger during that boss battle. There wasn't any agency. I feel like the ending kind of soured my opinion on the game. But everything leading up to that point, the first... It had, one, it had a really, really strong first two acts. The first two acts of the game were extremely strong. I feel like it got to the point where the developers had to find a way to end the game this is a take that I'm, i have about the game i thought it would have been more profound i guess more more profound inverted commas you know at the point when you climb to the top of the the tower to finally do the fixing stuff i thought we were going to die then i genuinely thought the the choices that i made throughout the game would lead to the player character dying finally reaching the top getting struck by lightning and dying. It just had a really tacked on um, ending. But apart from that, very enjoyable game. That's that's the only reason why the game's not an S for me. But I enjoyed my friendly neighborhood. Night Blights. Night Blights is a classic. The latter half of the game turns into a bit of a frustration loop, but the character designs of the, 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 the Night Blights designs are really good. We were playing as like a minuscule sized toddler running the length of the house at like 2 a.m. trying to make sure the blights don't kill us. And I thought I was pretty good. I, I also like the death screens in the game. Like having the death screens feel like a, a children's book. It kind of upped the creep factor in my opinion. Night of the Consumers, uh, unfinished, so I can't really rate it. So I'm probably I'm probably gonna, because a retail horror game in general, I'm probably actually gonna put it on B. The Night Ripper, I think it's Puppet Combo's best game. I have not played Stay Out of the House yet, so I can't comment, but I think the Night Ripper is definitely A, if not S. I, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put Night Ripper on S actually. I genuinely think the Night Ripper is an S tier game. No players online. I did not like the whole trope of the my dead wife thing, but the ARG was fun. I'm gonna put this on C. The game itself, the concept is cool, but they didn't really elaborate on it other than the ARG. I just didn't like it. One late night, one late night kind of sucked balls. The sequel's even worse. Outlast. Okay, it's good. You thought I was gonna say it was bad. Nah, it's not bad. Outlast is actually pretty good. Outlast 1. I did not like Outlast 2. I'm gonna say I thought that sucked balls. Phasmophobia. Phasmophobia. I have 13 hours of phasmophobia footage recorded for a T9 video. I want to make a big movie and we're going to call it the ultimate phasmophobia experience. I've recorded phasmophobia ever since I had the PNG. Well, phasmophobia is a fun with friends and I'm going to put that in A because I, I, for it being the first of it and it being in VR, it's so damn good. Now we get to some controversy. Poppy Playtime. Now, Poppy Playtime, the business practices of the developers are really scummy. It kind of sucks so much as well. I think Poppy Playtime Chapter 1 is actually really, it's pretty fucking effective. The vent chase sequence is up there with one of the scariest chase sequences in any horror game. It's well animated and Huggy Wuggy is actually genuinely bloody fast. The entire time you're sold on Huggy Wuggy being a big monster that probably moves slowly and like stares at you and stuff like that. Then all of a sudden he climbs into the vents like faster than you. You have little to no reaction time to look back. I feel like also that mechanic with the two hands as well. It was bare bones, but it was something different. Chapter one 
was well made. If Poppy Playtime was its own thing, on its own, with, with all of that, I probably actually would have put Poppy Playtime in A. But it didn't. Chapter 2 happened and it was really, really lame. And the developers' business practices were really, really lame. Making cha Chapter 1 free but then making chapter two a DLC to the rest of the game, which now costs money. I was like, that's, that's scummy. Also the NFT thing, also the drama between the developers and other developers and YouTubers and everything. It's, also the forced merchandising, of the characters and everything. It was, uh, I'm probably, I'm actually gonna put it on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it on C. Although I will say, I actually went and watched the trailer for chapter three and I think they could cook. I am going to let them cook for chapter three. I appreciate that they're going all in on the scary imagery. I'm not really a point of authority in horror games, but don't disappoint me. Devs, I know you're watching this. I know you're gonna watch it eventually, but don't disappoint me. I'm going to let you cook. Maybe I treated you too harshly. Project Cat. I'm, I'm probably gonna be a bit quick with this one. I actually, mm, it, was, it was decent for a game maker game. I think it was carried by the art. I'm probably gonna put this here though. Psycho no Satoka, I, I played this. I mm, It was buggy as shit and it's not scary. It's not really down to being scary. It's just the developer trying to flex the AI in that game. Maybe I should replay it, but I'm gonna put that one on D. Sally face. I'm going to put that on I don't know because I'm going to replay this game on T9 soon. This is going to be an I don't know. I have played it, I've played it before, but I'm going to play, I want to play it again. SCP-087. Do you know what? You know what? A bit of a tangent here. SCP-087, I actually was interested. Does anyone know where this in this image came from? Not the smile dog. You know that, you know that smile? Basically, Markiplier thumbnails in 2013. Everyone tells me it comes from Smile Dog, but this image, I'm pretty sure predated it. I wonder where the smile came from. But 087 was pretty fun. I'm probably gonna put this one at A because it was a, I mean, it's kind of cheating. It's SCP. SCP Containment Breach goes without saying. Also, uh, fun fact, I'm up in the speedrun record list. It depends on when the T9 video is out, but there will be a T9 video documenting my, my efforts to speedrun SCP Containment Breach. Shipwreck 64, Um, I was told to ignore that one, so I'm gonna put that on, I don't know. Siren Head 2020. I'm gonna say it right now. I miss Siren Head. I miss when I miss when Siren Head was a trend. It was it was special. <laughs> Even though Siren Head games they got der derivative, it was cool. And I think Siren Head 2020 was a pretty decent, was well, a pretty decent entry to the Siren Siren Head like franchise. Granted though, I didn't like the mechanic of if you died at any point in the game ever, you ended up losing all of your progress. Hang on, hold. We've got essential Siren Head content. Imagine if you're in a forest, and from a distance, all you hear is. Slender the Arrival. I am gonna be buying it. I'm gonna put this on A. The only reason why it's not on S is repetition. But ah, 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 I don't know. S or A, oh, oh. It is one of my favorite. Horror. It, rep it represents an era of purity. And yes, the game is getting an update. If you didn't know already, Slendy Tubbies. Now, the first two games kind of suck balls, but they're fun with friends. The third game is goofy fun, though. We're going to be honest here. I'm going to put it in B. If we're rating on the franchise, like the developer knows that Slendy Tubbies 1 and 2 are dog shit. The third one is great. Soma. I think I'm going to say it. Frictional's best. This and Amnesia. Sonic Dot. I'm... No, okay. Yeah. Now, if I was rating it on Sonic.EYX, EYX would be um, about B. But Sonic.EYX, I cannot take the game seriously. The stolen images, the weird Kefka love and everything. No. Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion. All right, we're going to be quick with these ones. S or A. I'm, I'm going to put it on S. Sweet 776. Underrated one, actually. I think Sweet 776 is a pretty good, um, pretty good and scary horror game. Title Tale. Okay, it was very inconsistent with the making noise thing, but I will say Tattletale is way ahead of its time. If it was released nowadays, it would have done gangbusters, but I'm glad that the developers made Tattletale, made the DLC, and that was it. I'm just gonna put in B, put in A. The Baby in Yellow. The Baby in Yellow was surprisingly good. I think the Baby in Yellow actually went 
a bit hard. From the original demo, where the demo was just do stuff with baby and baby creep, uh, baby's creepy. The, the elaboration on the story is insane. It got milked like hell. It's it's not finished. I don't think it got milked like hell. Unless they've been doing like paid for DLC that I'm not aware of. I thought it was pretty good. Because it doesn't take itself seriously. The convenience store. Now the convenience store is a bit um weird because there's a lot of chillers art games that I could have done. I just went for the one that I played that I thought was most accessible. Now the convenience store, I think chillers art's done better games than that. But there's something about the convenience store that I really liked. Again, it's retail horror, but it's like retail J horror. It was, I'm gonna keep this one on B. I'm gonna be simple with that. The Crooked Man. I'm gonna be controversial. I think this one's B as well. I played it for T9. I fell asleep, almost fell asleep playing it. That game is a lot of walking. The story is good, but the gameplay is uh, every map was huge and for what purpose my video was so long for what purpose really and also the chases with the crooked man weren't really that scary it wasn't all that the higher world loophole so I'm gonna be, gonna be direct with that one. I think that's an A. The Man From The Window. For a gimmicky game, I have a soft spot in my heart for said technician games. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie. Very simple. Character designs are goofy, but pretty damn good. I'm gonna put it over here. The Mortuary Assistant. Okay, Mortuary Assistant. I think that goes in S goes out without saying. The Witch's House. It's probably my, sorry, it's probably my favorite RPG maker horror game, but it's still not a ma it is a must. I'm going to put this one in S. Timor. Oh, fun thing about Timor. Did you know that the developer has made so many of these games and has made a remake of Timor? I want to play all these games for a video, but we have to be real with ourselves. Timor is dog shit, but the developer is really cool. And I think the developer knows that the games, the original games are dog shit because he remade them. Editor, put one of the jump scares on the screen right now. Vanish. Okay, you know what? I, I I haven't showed you guys a bit for a while. You thought Markiplier was was happy beating 2020, 2020 mode. I'm gonna show you guys this right here is the definition of euphoria. I wanna give you guys some context. Markiplier has been trying to beat this game for a year and a half. Oh, it could be an open gear the way out. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Get me out of here! Oh! <laughs> Is it real? Wait. Is it a trick? Is this a trick? You're not fucking with me. <laughs> he's straight up. He's straight up just not. <laughs> Bro, he, he's straight up just. <laughs> he should have just climaxed. He just climaxed. Nobody oh, it's it's inside. There should be an emo. There should be an emo. Look at that. I am screen. I am screenshotting this. <laughs> Just. <to> <laughs> No, Vanish is one of the hardest, like, horror games ever. For him to, to, to beat that game, you know, it meant a lot. And I, that, the thing is, it had a really cool mechanic of, like, the corridors constantly changing. So no two playthroughs were the same. I thought that was pretty cool. I'm actually going to put this in A. And the last game, the 99th game to end the tier list. You may Nikki. And it goes without saying. It goes without saying that you may Nick is gonna go right here. All right. So after three hours and 20 minutes, we have finally done it. We have rated 99 indie horror games. Now this may be subject to change. I might edit a few of these like um, up, down, left, right, or whatever. If you don't agree with this tier list, I don't care. But if you want to do the tier list yourself, I will link it in the description if you want to make other people angry with um your with, with, with your decisions and everything. Right now, I don't think there's anything that I want to change. And everyone's gonna tell me, am I being too mean to security breach? No, I don't think I've been mean enough. The only th the thing that I like about security breach is the world design and the animatronic designs. But those are not even from a horror standpoint, just on its own. Security breach is not a good 
game. It really is not. And the problems are deeper than the bugs. It's the story as well. Anyway, I think it's good. I, 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 I think it's good. People are going to be mad about where I put Bendy, but I'm sorry. Chapter three just kind of killed it. And then chapter five being a disappointment is, is what it is. But yeah, so... For those of you guys who are watching on the second channel, thank you guys so much for watching this tier list. If you want me to do more tier lists, recommend me some good tier list ideas up in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching the 99 indie horror game tier list. If you want to try the tier list yourself, will be in the description down below. If you want recommendations or you want to give me recommendations for other tier lists, leave them in the comments down below. And for those of you guys who are watching on the second channel, I will see you guys in another video.